James Hinchcliffe is the leader of a new breed of IndyCar driver. He's as good in front of the camera as he is behind the wheel. The Toronto area native sits in one of the highest profile seats in the sport and is battling for an IndyCar championship in just his second season. For the next 36 hours, we follow the hometown kid as he returns to race on the streets he grew up on. This was my favorite weekend as a kid. You know, for me, Christmas was in July. As a fan, I get excited, and then I remember, oh yeah, I actually got to take part in this whole thing. Let's hear it for the mayor of Hinchdown, your very own from Oakville, Ontario, James Hinchcliffe. It's James Hinchcliffe on IndyCar 36. It's Saturday morning, and the IZOD IndyCar Series has come to Toronto, James Hinchcliffe's hometown. The 25-year-old is quickly becoming the face of open-wheel racing here in Canada. Yeah, that's probably the first front page I think I've ever had on a newspaper here in Toronto, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's all part of it, man. I guess, uh, I, I guess that means you made it, right? <laughs> but the weekend didn't start off well for James and his Andretti Autosport team. They struggled to find speed in Friday's morning practice and then had a mechanical issue in the afternoon, forcing them to change engines and take a 10-grid penalty. It's definitely not all lost. We're not, we're not hanging our heads down just yet. It's definitely not the way you wanted to start the weekend, but we can, uh, we can bounce back from this. Morning. Good morning. Morning. How, are you? How did you sleep last night? <laughs> I, slept, I slept wonderfully. How about yourself? Um, not too good. No? Why? We had well, such a good day yesterday. How could you not sleep well? Well, I love these 10 grid penalties, but yeah. you know, they, they add an added challenge to the weekend, yes. but it's a, sort of a challenge we could do without this weekend. Yeah, I copy that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a challenge we could do without on any weekend, but. <laughs> yes, if we're gonna... particularly this weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for many reasons, that's true. But last time we had a penalty, we ended up on the podium. So let's focus on that. Okay. Yeah. It's not impossible. A brief rainstorm cools the record temperatures. But the action was heating up on track, as James was anxious to make up for lost time in the final practice before qualifying. Okay, track is clear, left side tires, nobody come out behind you yet. We uh, begin this third and final practice session for the IZOD IndyCar Series under very wet conditions. The track was wet right off the bat, and then the car felt pretty good in the rain. We are at least able to get a bit of a read on all the, the kitchen sink changes we threw in the thing last night after yesterday. Good job, P6, 72.5 now is quick time for Hinch. What a difference a day makes. The GoDaddy team is fast and finished the session seventh quick. Even with the penalty, James is confident he can battle for the pole this afternoon in qualifying. I think a lot of our strategy for qualifying was based on how this practice went and because we're on the sharpish end and, and you know and running for the fast six you got to go for it you got to try and you know start as high up as you can and, and just use the tires that you've got in the race you know we, we got to take that penalty but we uh, we did it from the fast six in Long Beach so we'll just try and do it again here. One person who knows something about racing in Toronto is seven-time winner and team owner Michael Andretti. If you you got to be careful you get if you get greedy there no, sure. you can, you know, that's when you give away a little bit because yeah. and it's also a corner you hit one out of every three laps, right? I wouldn't like get fixated on turning. Is what I'm saying. It's, it's awesome having Michael here to, to be able to lean on, and I mean at any race, but especially here in Toronto. I mean, I was telling Marco last night at dinner. I've, I was actually at the track for every single one of his dad's wins, so I've seen him do it from the front. I've seen him do it from the back. I've seen him start at the front, get taken on a lap one, go to last, and still come back and win it. So if there's one guy that knows how to do it right, it's Michael. So it's awesome having him in your corner. We followed James for a long time, followed his whole career. You know, he was actually raced against Marco in, in Mazda and always was really quick. You know, he was somebody that we felt that, uh, you know, we, we would love to have in our race car. And, and then on top of it is his personality. He's just such a great guy. You know, he's just a fun guy to be around. I'm, I'm happy being the odd guy out if it's because I don't watch The Bachelorette. I'm comfortable with my manhood. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Look, man. Listen, I've, been, I've been forced to watch things I didn't want to watch too. What, what gets me now is I haven't that you're forced. so hooked. I haven't been forced. That's what I'm no, saying. I'm you not actually, forced. You got forced to watch the first one, and now you're hooked. Now you're a fan. 
your wife wasn't home on Monday nights, you would still watch The Bachelorette? If I was home, yes. It can't lie. I just can't talk myself into lying to you and just, that I don't. No, and I appreciate the honesty. I'm just telling you, it makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> really uncomfortable? Oh my God. <laughs> With the important topics out of the way, James and his crew can now concentrate on qualifying, which begins in less than two hours. IndyCar 36 is brought to you by Firestone, the first name in Indy racing. My dad's from England, and so growing up, rather than watching hockey every week, you know, he wasn't Canadian, so he wasn't really into hockey, he was into racing. What happened was my dad had a midlife crisis, and he bought, uh, at 45, an old, like, British vintage race car, and started racing in this series, so I would go with him and I'd be doing the fuel and the tires. I was his pit crew, you know, I was eight years old and just loved it. James would come to the track with me, check the tires, put the, help me with the fuel, help me put my helmet on, and, um, and then for his ninth birthday, he got a go-kart, and that was it. The Hinchcliffe family has been going to the Toronto race for nearly 25 years, since James was just 18 months old. I remember just being so fascinated by the by the pit stops and like the, the frantic activity and the loud noises, the burnouts were the best, you know, leaving the pits was like clearly as far as I was concerned the coolest part about being a race car driver, just getting to do big smoky burnouts. I remember it all, man. I mean it's uh, it's weird to think back now how into it I really was when I was really young. Growing up, James' favorite driver was fellow Canadian Greg Moore. He remembers spending time with him at the 1999 race just three months before he was tragically killed. Greg came out and, and just chatted to my sister and I for like 10 minutes. And it was the only real sort of, you know, I'd gotten his autograph a couple times, but it was the only sort of face-to-face, one-on-one interaction I ever had with him. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, something I'll never forget. And I'm, I'm really glad I waited those three hours and 10 minutes because I wouldn't have had another chance to get that, get that autograph and to have that moment. And as a tribute to his racing hero, James continues to wear Greg Moore's trademark red racing gloves. His car was always blue and white, and everything else on him was blue and white, but he always had these super, you know, distinct red gloves. And, uh, and it's a trend I just sort of picked up from pretty much the start of my, my formula car career. Uh, I've always worn red gloves because of Greg. I've tried to keep that tradition alive for, for him and, and for the Canadian racing community. It's one o'clock and time for qualifying. James was seventh quick in the morning practice and is online to accomplish his goal of qualifying in the top six for tomorrow's race. No mistaking the car of James Hinchcliffe and GoDaddy.com. Uh, it's out onto the course. Me too. Fans are going to be happy. Right now, both Canadian drivers, Tag and Hinch, looking like they're going to move on to round number two. We end up fifth. Hinch advances to round two where he is even faster. James Hinchcliffe right now, Mark, is at the top of the charts, making a bid to move into the Firestone Fast Six at one minute, 0374, but you know they're gonna get a lot quicker than that. Yeah, that put a charge to the crowd if he was able to grab the pole. I'm gonna go a bit slow, cooling tires, and go for another one. Okay, copy, you got one more lap. So sorry, go ahead sorry. and do that. D5, less than a tenth out of six. Hinch needs to pedal a little harder with 90 seconds left. He's seventh quick. By the end of it, we needed two tenths anyway. Sorry, boys. The GoDaddy team settles for ninth quick, less than two tenths of a second from making their goal. You knew deep down it wasn't going to go any quicker, but yo, it's yeah, helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I tried cooling it for that one lap. Qualifying did not go exactly as planned. We thought that maybe we'd be able to, you know, get ourselves into the fast six and you know, at the end of the day, I think as a team, we just, we lost our way a little bit and, and we didn't quite have it. It sucks to miss it by such a small amount and not have any Andretti cars in the Fast Six. So we'll take our penalty, we'll take our 19th place starting spot and, and just try and work on the car and make sure it's good on Sunday. Qualifying is over, but the work is not done, especially here in Toronto, where he'll make over 30 appearances this weekend, promoting the race, his team and sponsors. What are you starting tomorrow? 19. 19. Doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as the front guys yeah, drive, we'll so patience. Yeah. Patience. We'll mix, exactly. Long race, man. Long race. Man. Long race. Just another day reminder. Sure. How's it going, man? James. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good? You want me to get a thing for you? 
Next, it's the autograph session with the other IndyCar Series drivers, where James drew some of the biggest crowds. There you go. Good luck Sunday. Appreciate that. One of the benefits of racing in your hometown is knowing where to eat. Tonight, it's dinner with 40 of his closest friends and family at one of their favorite restaurants. How you doing? Not bad, man. Not bad. So Hang I'm, in there. I'm sorry about the, uh, the, the 10 points. It is what it is. So the, well, Chris, I was saying this means just the race is more insane when you come from there. Well, exactly. It'll be that much more rewarding when I move, carve my way up the field. You go, of course, you have to go and like outdress everybody and just make us all look bad. I love you. I love you. you I love that? you too, brother. I love you. I love you too, brother. Uh, I love you like a brother, <laughs> as it were. That's funny. <laughs> no, you're right. You know, if there's one thing I haven't had enough of this Sorry. weekend so far, it's like, pictures. Like, let's like go. A hinge <laughs> okay. All right. Go time. All right. Let's eat. Zip it. Sorry. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's like it's public knowledge now. So did Cheers. you go to the space camp twice? Or just once? Did you really lean forward so you can did make you get a, You went to space camp twice, right? Uh-huh. Twice. Two times. Welcome all to the first annual Hingetown uh, pre-race dinner. Because it is the first. Last year we had McDonald's or something. Right. Let's have the, the longest trip award. Well, that would go to Miss Kirsten B, who has come 10,000 plus miles all the way. We're not quite sure why, but just to get a picture on the front page of the Toronto Sun. So then we have the two enablers. We have- you said you were gonna introduce everybody. Special guest this evening, James Hinchcliffe, our driver. Cheers, Jimmy. Uh, uh, and the woman who gave me life. The yeah, one, but the one person yeah. you decided to leave out. I'm not was sure. Not I, only my mother. I'm not sure I was there though. I, just, I'm just saying. I do have a striking resemblance to our former milkman. Yes. As dinner continues, race day approaches. The green flag falls in less than 16 hours. It's a beautiful day. The CN Tower and the rest of the evolving skyline of the city of Toronto off in the distance. Going to be a great day for racing on the streets of Toronto. Waking up on race day, no matter where you are, is exciting. Especially when you're here in your hometown and I get to walk out of my bus and see the CN Tower just look at me in the face. It's a pretty cool feeling. Over four hours before the race, James Hinchcliffe and his crew use the morning warm-up to decide race strategy. Since they'll be starting back in 19, they can afford to take some chances today. One option is starting the race on the softer, faster Firestone Red tires, which won't last long, but will allow him to work his way through the field early in the race. It's a gamble no matter which way you do. Right, yeah. We just gotta decide which way yeah. right. I mean, Are you putting 50 on black or 50 on red? You're not risking anything if you don't have much to lose. We're gonna stick our neck out a little bit here today. Not, not, not be stupid. We have to take a little bit of a risk to get the reward we're looking for here. Right off the bat, we know we're gonna do something a bit different try and mix things up a bit and hope for, hope for the cautions to fall our way. Race mornings are filled with sponsor commitments. None more important than GoDaddy. James is in his first year with Andretti Autosport and is replacing Danica Patrick in the GoDaddy car. Hello again. Yes. I couldn't be happier to have landed not only with this team but with GoDaddy as a sponsor because they're such a cool company to work with. and. You know, everybody knows them. Everybody knows that they're sort of little free-spirited. They have fun. They take their business seriously, and and that like that sums me up to a T. He's done a great job for GoDaddy. They love him. He's there for them, and and they love that. They love the crazy stuff that he does, and uh, he's he's a perfect uh, addition with GoDaddy. With his commitments over, James disappears to his bus for a quick nap before the race. 
for me, it's just that perfect way to just sort of recharge, clear everything, and, and really have my mind as clear as possible when I get into the car. Ryan, who runs my PR on the team, she openly admitted that she couldn't just tell management that she was gonna like schedule me nap time. So if you look at my date book for the whole like weekend schedule, it says interview with Sandman. So I'm just giving away the secret now. I hope that doesn't hurt me in the future, but it's, it, it works out. 90 minutes before the race, James returns to do something he does more on a race weekend than drive the car, sign autographs. I was a race fan long before I was a racing driver. And I was a kid with a Sharpie and the hero card standing outside the barriers waiting for an autograph. So to be on the other side of it now, it's a weird feeling, but at the same time, I've got a huge respect and appreciation for everybody out there because I was that guy. And I know how much it meant to me when a driver made you know, the effort to come out and sign some autographs. So I try and be conscious of that because at the end of the day, as much as racing drivers like to think that this all happens for us, it's not got nothing to do with us. It's all about those guys. So I, I try to make sure that they get taken care of. Make it a hometown win, eh? Appreciate it, guys. Let's hear it for the mayor of Hinchdown, your very own from Oakville, Ontario, James Hinchcliffe. How are you, man? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Hey, you doing well? He's the perfect guy to be in this position. He was the kid who grew up here. Now he's that guy that all of these kids are looking at saying, I want to be like James Hinchcliffe. Thanks, guys. Thank you. As far as Canadian fans are concerned, the torch has been passed now officially from Paul Tracy to James Hinchcliffe. Finally, it's showtime. No more autographs, pictures, or meetings. It's time to race in the event he's been coming to his entire life. Drivers, start your engines. IndyCar 36 was brought to you by Firestone, the first name in Indy racing. 25-year-old James Hinchcliffe has realized his dream. He's gone from a kid watching this event from the grandstands to a competitor, a contender, and fan favorite in the IZOD IndyCar series. I think part of the reason I am the way I am and that I'm kind of fun-loving and don't take things too seriously is because I really appreciate the position that I'm in. I know how hard I work. I know how many sacrifices my family had to make throughout the years. I know how many people supported me on the way up. And, and now I literally get to do what I always dreamed of doing. And so I just appreciate every minute of every day because I know like that it can be taken away. Now come down the front straightaway. Crowd is on their feet. This race is green down into one. Hold on. Green fly, green. The start was good, you know, we got a couple guys on lap one and then picked off a few more. You know, I think we made the right tire strategy call and, and that's been this team's strength on the GoDaddy cars. As George has been calling such good races for us. Code Brand's going wide, he almost put him into that outside wall. Code Brand picked the inside and then when I pulled outside, he moved left. He altered his line, that's a block as far as Paul is concerned. Copy, we'll say stop. Nine laps into the race, and James has already moved up five spots, and now is in a battle with Tony Kanaan for 13th place. There again, Tony had chosen to stay on the inside. Now Hinch is gonna run out of room here. Yes, he is. Oh, oh look at that. Boys are playing rough early. TK and I touched. I think I may have bent something in the right front. I can drive it, but I got a bit more understeer than I did before. After improving seven positions early in the race, the team sticks with their original plan to pit early. Pit this lap, you need anything, pit this lap. Running 12th, they pit on lap 17 and hope for a yellow flag. Do you need anything, James? Let's do a Turner front wing, I think. We picked up some understeer when we hit Tony. Okay, plus one on the front wing. James, do you need the wing that bad because we'll be uh, short on fuel here. Don't wait on the wing, guys. Once again, this is part of that off strategy. Coming early, get out. Okay, pedal it hard here, pedal it hard. Pitting early drops them back to 20th place. Now they'll need some help for their strategy to pay off. And Ray Hall is into the wall. 
at turn number one. Full core shallow, two. Out of two. Guys coming out of the pit. Don't let him get yes. Eight on fuel, eight on fuel, work on fuel, work on fuel. With a well-timed caution flag, it appears luck is finally on their side. And with the majority of drivers making their first pit stop, James moves up the field and will restart in fourth place. But the 27 machine quickly develops a problem. Not there's much we can do about it, but the motor's got some weird hesitation. Out of five and down the front straight. Hey, 10-4, keep it up here. It's like it hesitates. It's like coughs and stutters and hesitates when you're trying to accelerate. It's not just as simple as like, oh, it feels slow, like you can feel it trying, something's not working right. I mean, you can hear it from where we're at now. Leave it in one, we got some issues here, but just uh, just don't give up yet. All right, well, I'm not gonna give up anything, so you just let me know what you want me to do with anything else, or just keep doing what I'm doing. You have to keep doing what you're doing right now, James. The vibrations and high RPMs are getting bad now. It, can, it feels like something's starting to let go. Hit this lap. Just make sure I'm hearing you right. You want me to pit this lap? Yeah, we, uh, we, get, we can see it here. We're going to take the engine cover off and then uh, plug in. And uh, we'll take a look out of here, James. Take four right now. This is stuck. We get set to go back to green flag racing here at the Honda Indy Toronto. And as we do, James Hinchcliffe will come off the track and to pit lane. We got a problem for James Hinchcliffe. It looks like it could be terminal. It's a heartbreak to go out early here. That, you know, the whole weekend's been incredible. All the support from everybody here in Toronto. Like I said, best city in the world. Love coming here to race. And uh, thank you guys for everything. It's been awesome. So the hometown kid's day is done early, but he remains positive in defeat. This sport, is, it's always been the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and, uh, and it's easy to get caught up in both of those. So I try really hard, no matter if things are going really well or things are going really bad, just to try and keep a level head about it. And, you know, we, we live to race another day, and that's what it's all about. James Hinchcliffe is going to carry the Canadian flag uh, as far as uh, IndyCar goes for a good number of years.